Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I was just filming my first impressions of this video. And in fact, I had to film it twice because the first time that I started filming it, I went down a big rabbit hole talking about Vanek Super Clean and some of the alternatives that people like to talk about, at least to me, as if they are equals. And I do not believe that they are. <laughs> so I decided to refilm that and leave that part of the conversation out because my first impressions of this knife deserve, deserve to just be my first impressions of this knife and not necessarily a big steel dialogue. But I still want to say what I was going to say. So I am going to talk now about Vanex Super Clean and why I keep harping on about it on a number of platforms, both here on YouTube, um, on Instagram, I talk about it every now and then, and on Facebook, I've engaged in a number of conversations about the steel. I brought up something um, not too long ago because it actually stemmed from a conversation about Vanex versus LC200N. Um, I put a poll in my stories that I, I think would be, or not even a poll, I think I just put some text in my stories <laughs> explaining kind of where I stood on this, but I was in a conversation with somebody who was claiming that LC200N is the best steel currently in existence for their needs and preferences, sure. Not necessarily, they weren't making any claims that it has the best edge retention or that it has the most toughness or, or any of that. But they were claiming that because of its stainlessness, it is the best steel available for what they want right now. And I said, what about Vanex? Granted, this was in a Spyderco group and Spyderco has not made any knives yet in Vanex Super Clean. I know there's discussion that I've seen recently that they may be making a mule in Vanex to see how well received the steel is and, and to do like more testing on it, etc. Um, so to this person's point, there aren't any Spider Co options in it. And so Spider Co does have a number of options in LC200N, to name a few. The Spidey Chef, which is an excellent knife. Uh, they make the Caribbean. Um, they've made a lightweight salt version of the Native 5 with LC200N. They've made a number of things in LC200N. The Siren, the Waterway. Bunch of knives, right? I like LC200N. I have nothing against the steel. Um, in fact, I would pick it over a number of steels. I think it is a good steel. But what the interesting thing was to me was that I said Vanex is objectively better and I know a lot of people get real upset in the steel dialogue space when you call one steel better than another because there are trade-offs in steel and I'm not even going to pretend that I am an expert at metallurgy or anything like that if you want to see somebody who is, uh, Dr. Laren Thomas of Knife Steel Nerds is a great person to listen to. A number of the people who do extensive knife testing for edge retention, etc., people like um, Outpost 76 or Tom Hosang Outdoors or Cedric and Ada, there are a lot of people who do steel testing. That's just a, a scratching the surface of people who do that and dwell in that space. But I don't know nothing about it. <laughs> and I pay attention to it and I'm intrigued by it. And there are some things that I can pick up just from looking at charts and, and understanding the basics. Something that I understand about Vanex Super Clean compared to LC200N is that Vanex Super Clean is at least as stainless and it has better edge retention. And from what I understand, it also has more toughness than LC200N does. So, Reasonably, one could conclude that the advantage, the only thing left for LC200N to be better at, is ease of sharpening, right? The way most people view steels, that those would be kind of the tangible elements that you can grade a steel on. Let me express this. In my opinion, I don't see ease of sharpening as a metric of performance. I just don't. And I haven't heard a good argument from anybody as to a, a claim that makes sense as to why ease of sharpening is a metric of performance. It's a very important thing to consider. I don't usually recommend that people buy knives that they don't have the equipment to be able to maintain. But if you are somebody who has diamond stones and a good sharpening system, you can reasonably sharpen pretty much anything. 
I'm confident with my setup that I currently have, a KME with diamond stones, I could sharpen all the way up to my Maximet Para 3. Maximet is probably the most difficult to sharpen knife that I own. Maybe S90V might be similar. I mean, 10V is, is up there as well, but I'm not afraid of any of my steels based on the diamond stones that I have and, and all of that. So it's important to consider ease of sharpening when you're deciding what knife you actually want to own. But make no mistake, I don't believe that ease of sharpening is the same as a metric of performance. A metric of performance when it comes to steel is edge retention, toughness, and stainlessness. Those are tangible things that can be measured, and a lot of people, like I said, spend time in that space measuring those things. And different steels, of course, are going, the same steel is going to perform wildly differently depending on heat treat and tempering, and there's grind and angles, and there's a lot that goes into not just selecting a steel, but then making that steel perform to the best of its abilities, and that's a whole nother thing. But if you take properly heat treated Vanex, it is my understanding that it will outperform properly heat treated LC200N at everything that I consider a metric of performance, and that I would argue are the only real metrics of performance. I kind of put it like this when I posted this in my stories. If you are looking at a performance car, a race car, right? Let's say it's a Porsche GT3 class, not a Porsche GT3, maybe that's a bad example, but there's a class of racing GT3 cars, right? A GT3 Cup Porsche race car is gonna make a lot of horsepower. It's gonna be very good and, and efficient at putting that horsepower down to the ground. It's gonna be dialed with suspension components that allow it to corner effectively and to not have body roll or lean. And it's, it's going to be dialed to be very effective at going around a racetrack. I would never consider a metric of performance for that car how easy it is to change the oil on it or how inexpensive it is to change the oil on it. An oil change is regular maintenance for cars. Sharpening is regular maintenance for knives. It will inherently be much easier to change the oil, the oil on your Toyota Corolla than it would on a purpose-built race car. It's not going to be easy or inexpensive to do it on the race car. But make no mistake, the Porsche is the faster car around corners, in a straight line, any way you cut it. It is higher performance than the Corolla. I'm not saying that people shouldn't own Corollas. I don't drive a Porsche race car, not even close. I drive a Honda CRV. That is not a performance car. Because for me, with a car, I had to make a choice based on my budget, the amount of money I had to spend on it, and foreseeably seeing what the cost of ownership would be. If cost of ownership of Vanex, if it's difficulty to sharpen compared to LC200N, prohibits you from being able to reasonably own a knife in Vanex, then yes, LC200N is the better knife steel for you to pick for your lifestyle. That does not mean that it is higher performance. And I see a lot, the reason for this whole thing I see a lot of people conflating ease of sharpening with a performance metric. I'm not saying it doesn't belong in the conversation of steels. Ease of sharpening is important to bring up for a reason. I should know before I buy something whether I'm capable of owning it long term or if I'm going to get to a point where I've gone through that edge and then I can't do anything with it. <laughs> like what? then I either have to pay money to send it out and have it sharpened, or I have to sell it to somebody and claim, hey, this is dull. You're going to have to figure out how to sharpen it when you get it. Like, those aren't good options to have. I don't want to buy a race car because I can afford it with every penny I've ever scraped together in my life, and then after having it for a month, one thing goes wrong on it, and I have no way of doing anything with it. That It's a quick way to lose out on a bunch of money. The same thing can happen with knives. I think that ease of sharpening should be discussed, but I don't understand why people keep trying to make the argument to me that, for in their opinion, 
LC200N is as good of a performer as Vanex because they have an easier time owning it. That's just a fallacy. That's I, I don't see a way to make that true. <laughs> so my point about Vanex is that Vanex, in my opinion, out of the steals that I have experienced, read about, have been able to buy up to this point, is the best corrosion resistant steel, the best stainless steel, like stainless in the sense that it's actually <laughs> highly corrosion resistant, that I have ever experienced. Um, it has edge retention that is phenomenal. I have not had any issues with toughness. I haven't had issues with LC200N in the past, but I haven't used it all that extensively. One interesting anecdotal thing that did happen to me is that my production folder that happens to be in Vanex, I don't have because I loaned it out, but in preparation for loaning it out, my quiet carry waypoint, I disassembled that knife for the first time, fully broke it apart because it was getting pretty gritty. It had been in salt water a number of times, to be fair, and had like sand and stuff in it. I am not nice to that knife. In fact, I get it wet every single chance that I possibly can. I love if I see moisture around me and that knife is in my pocket, I make a point to get it wet and then put it back in my pocket wet because I just love that it's so corrosion resistant and I get a kick out of the fact that no matter what I've done to it, it hasn't appeared to rust. So I pull the knife apart so that I can clean it out and re-lube it, reassemble it, and get it ready for my buddy who's going to be borrowing it, right? And if you watch that video, you'll see that I found a little bit of rust inside it. But guess where the rust was? It was not on the Vanex Super Clean Blade. It was on the LC200N liner. So, in my only experience where I've gotten the two materials wet an identical number of times because they are on the same knife, the one that happened to rust first was LC200N. Now, that knife is still obscenely corrosion resistant. I'm going to continue to get it wet and continue my objective unscientific testing with it because A, I have fun with it, and B, it could have been a fluke. Maybe something got on to that lock interface right around the detent ball where the corrosion wasn't actually the LC200N, it was something on the surface of it, or maybe it's because it was right where there were kind of machining points, or I don't know. I want to keep figuring it out. But the only knife that has both materials that I've gotten wet an identical amount of times, it was the LC200N that rusted before the Vanex. So if you're making an argument for what is the highest performance stainless, highly corrosion resistant steel currently offered that you can buy on a knife, I would argue that it is Vanex. I hope that changes. I hope something even grander comes out and that steels continue to advance and Vanex becomes antiquated. That would be great. I love seeing that progress. But I just I don't like when people keep making the argument that LC200N is a high performance steel. It is highly corrosion resistant and that's pretty much it. It's not terrible in edge retention. It's I wouldn't even like it's not even bad. It's pretty good for edge retention. And it's pretty good for toughness. It is okay. But it's just not the end-all, be-all of stainlessness. And so many people keep acting like because Vanex is still somewhat limited, although it's available on production folders, that it doesn't exist, that it's a unicorn. It does exist. I own two knives in it now that I have this. This is a custom, but guess what? When SPK gets more Vanex which he plans to if he can, and I assume he will be able to, it's probably just a waiting game, he'll make more of these in Vanex, and there will be more knives on the market in Vanex. It is something that is going to continue, I believe, becoming more and more available. And so we don't need to pretend that it's not as good as what's more widely available just because it's more scarce. It exists, it's real. I mean, it's not a precious metal in the sense that it's like, worth its weight in gold. It's more expensive than LC200N, but if the companies that make knives want to use this, I assume the company that makes Vanex can make more of it. Just assuming here. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts. Not really in a nutshell. That was probably kind of a long video after I got all, all of that out. Um, but yeah, if you're somebody who hates my rambling videos and you just watched all of this, joke's on you. Spare me your comment about how 
you don't like me talking for an entire video because you're the idiot who watched all of this. Um, I don't mean to call you an idiot. I'm sure you're a nice guy, but I don't understand those types of comments. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you made it all the way to this point and found this at all interesting, just the musings of a madman here. Um, but Vanix is real. I have evidence. There are two knives that I own that have it, and it's great, and I love it a lot more than LC200N because ease of sharpening doesn't matter that much to me, and it I don't think should matter that much to that many people like they pretend it does. Anyways, see you guys.